These three interior designers have been given a photograph of an empty galley kitchen. They have free reign to design it in any way they please. My name is Courtney McLeod, and my design style is elegant, but with a wink and a smile. I'm Sasha Bykoff, and my design style would be if Marie Antoinette was at Studio 54. My name is Becky Carter, and my designs are fearless, architectural, and palette savvy. No clients, no restrictions, just blank space. This is definitely a typical city kitchen. It's small, it's sad. <laughs> what I don't love is that this window, just, it's not getting celebrated. We are really limited on space. We're really gonna have to rework this floor plan in order to make things all fit. I think in a kitchen, one of the coolest things that you can do, especially in a small kitchen, is to do tile, but tile everywhere. I'm selecting a really beautiful, rich sky blue for my wall tile. And this one in particular is a fabulous hand glazed tile by Fire Clay Tile. And it really just made me think of nature and the outdoors. I've decided to go with a small scale, one by one mosaic. I think that this kitchen wants to kind of feel both retro and futuristic at the same time. And so I like the yellow because it is a bit of a retro color. I think I wanna keep this kitchen really light and bright because it's a small galley kitchen. I'm going to cover our walls in a travertine. It's a natural stone. It's going to add this like sense of luxury into the space. On our doorway separating the adjacent space to the kitchen, I've decided to make this wall a little bit of a wing here. And I'm going to be adding a marquetry, sort of a parquet, up the side of this wall. Parquet and marquetry is something that's commonly seen in more historical buildings. And I just think it would be really fun in my sort of futurist kitchen. For the ceiling, I'm gonna do the stainless steel ceiling because I want it to be reflective and I really like how the travertine and stainless steel kind of go together. It's really important that I keep this kitchen light so that you can see when you cook. On the ceiling, I'm gonna be cladding the whole thing with a walnut. The kitchen is inherently gonna be a space with a lot of hard surfaces and I would like to bring in some warmth and some natural wood by putting wood on the ceiling. So the ceiling, Everyone forgets the fifth wall, but I love, love, love to put interest on a ceiling. And so in this space, I'm planning to introduce a wonderful pattern from a company called Porter Telio. And they do these amazing hand-painted wallpapers on Japanese tea paper. So in this kitchen, we have what looks like an oak floor. It's not a very remarkable material. I wanna go with something that's just a little bit more flashy. The flooring that we're gonna be working with here is very heavily inspired by a designer named Gio Ponti. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a geometric field of different colors and stones using all these different kind of stone colors. These could be marbles, granites, quartzites, you name it. I'm gonna use the same travertine stone that I'm using on the walls on the floor as well. I want there to be a really nice transition from the walls to the floors. So I really want to incorporate additional pattern into the space. And so for me, the ceiling and the floor are going to echo each other. My best piece of advice when you're trying to live on the edge with pattern is to remember scale. So if you're working with two bold patterns, you wanna have one that's more loose, larger, more abstract, and then you wanna pair that with a pattern that is tighter, more regimented, but in the same or a complementary palette. So the window has this very heavy black frame. The window frame that I would like to do is 
stone. We're going to be using one of the stones from the floor, which will be this yellow. I'm also changing the design of the framing. So instead of having this more traditional kind of four panel window system, I'm switching it out to a design that feels a little bit more like something you would see in a more kind of European modernist apartment. I designed a custom roller shade that is made with brown leather and perfect with holes so that you get these little peekaboos of the scene behind the window. I am going to take off the window frame and I think I'm going to just create a more simple window frame around this window. So for the window, I wanted to do something that will be a bit of a literal translation of a piece from the artist Tomas Sarseno. His piece is a three-dimensional object, and so I thought it would be really cool to flatten that design and to turn it into a stained glass window. So the first thing I wanna do is move the sink underneath the window. And the idea behind this is that you can wash your dishes, you can clean your fruits, and you can really enjoy this view. Now for me, in a small kitchen like this, the best real estate is right next to the window. So I really don't want to ruin that area with just a really big blocky piece. And so I want to actually flip that and move that tall solid piece away from the window so that I can open that up and instead use that as a space that will be a work prep area. When I got the heartbreaking news from AD that I could not take down this wall, I started to really lean into a true galley kitchen. I started doing research on luxury yachts, trailers, airstreams, airplanes. If you have to have a real galley, let's look at some real galleys. I'm going to be making my upper cabinets so that they are designed to be angled. And the angle is going to be tighter at the bottom and wider at the top. Something that I love about this is it kind of feels like Marvin the Martian. It's giving this spaceship vibe. I'm paneling the fridge and all of our cabinetry in stainless steel. And the way that the steel works with the travertine, it's almost like a natural material with this kind of like reflective silvery finish, you're almost not gonna see any of the appliances in my kitchen. For the cabinets in my kitchen, I am planning to use a corally pinky red. I really thought that it would help to reinforce the nature or natural vibe of the space and be a perfect complement to the sky blue of the wall tile. I've incorporated a bit of shine through a lacquer finish, so that will definitely add to making the space feel brighter. What I really don't like, you would walk into the space and the first thing you would see would kind of be this like big refrigerator. I always like to hide them. So what I'm gonna do with the fridge is I'm gonna move it to the left side of the space. That way, when you walk into the room, you are not going to, you know, see the fridge first. So on my upper cabinets, I'm going to be designing them with these porthole windows that allow you to see ever so slightly into the cabinets themselves. I like it because it does harken back to a little bit of a marine feel. It might be something you would see on a boat or you might see it in a vintage trailer. I have incorporated very tall upper cabinets. It's really to take advantage of all the ceiling height to get as much storage as I possibly can. I've also made sure to do a variety of doors and drawers to really add a lot of functionality and variety that is perfect for a small cabinet kitchen. So for the lowers, what we're doing is we're doing a custom kitchen from a kitchen company called Abemis. They make these cabinets and they started out in creating custom kitchens for yachts. So this is going to be a beautiful brushed stainless. 
It is restaurant grade, and Abemis designed them so that the burners of the range are just set into the countertop. The whole thing is this monolithic piece of steel. It's incredibly architectural, it's incredibly simple, but at the same time has this really bizarre, fun warmth to it. It has these brass poles that I think really warm it up and add that kind of feeling of jewelry. Because we moved around our kitchen appliances, we have created way more counter space. This is really great because you can now use this space for prep, but you can also entertain more easily and you can have a bunch of dishes or hors d'oeuvres kind of on this counter. I think that the client for this kitchen, they might be city people who moved out to the country and this is their pied-a-terre. So I thought to myself, why take up so much space and energy using a full-size fridge when there are really excellent drawer fridge products out there? One of the focal points for my kitchen will be a beautiful suite of Bertazzoni appliances. And for this kitchen, I'm using a white range, which, you know, is a little bit unusual, but I think it's perfect for this light and airy space. It also has all of these wonderful brass accents to it. Brass is something that I want to bounce around the room, so it's a really like a piece of jewelry within the space, a functional piece of jewelry. But of course, function, we need to have safety. And so I've incorporated a complimentary vent hood that is a perfect match. I'm a big collector of tabletop, I love glassware, I love vases and urns, so I think the best part of a kitchen is definitely having some open shelving, and this adds personality to your home. I think that not only is it beautiful to display your objects, but it's so handy. It's like grab and go. You don't have to open up a door to get to what you need. I am moving the sink towards the opening of the kitchen. I'm sliding it down that wall right there, and. I'm doing it purely to make room for the curve. So by putting the sink there, that's given us some more architecture to be able to create that curved countertop in the back. I really wanted to create kind of this Eden kitchen, and I love a breakfast nook. The banquette is upholstered, and I'm gonna do this Clarence House fabric. I really like this fabric because it's neutral, but it has a really fun kind of wavy print to it. The table I'm gonna use in this space is vintage, it's from the 70s and it's also made of travertine and it has a steel element to it on the tabletop so it really matches perfectly with our kitchen. You don't expect to see a fabulous chandelier in a kitchen, but I think you should. <laughs> so here, I want to lean into that nature vibe, and I'm pulling a fixture from uh, Rosie Lee, my favorite lighting designer. I'm using her Laurel Blossom fixture, which is like this, but in more of a brass finish. The chandelier is Matthew Lenore, and it is from Carpenter's Workshop, and I really was attracted to this because because it's like these tubes of light. It's super modern, it's fun, and almost like these tubes of light work really well with the Clarence House fabric. Makes almost like this similar pattern in a way. The light over the sink is a vintage light from an Italian designer named Vico Magastretti. It is a soft frosted glass dome with a globe inside of it. And that's just gonna give a really soft diffuse light throughout the entire space. I love to incorporate all different types of lighting into a space. So we have our overhead light with our chandelier, but then we also have our counter lighting with our LED strips. And that's going to like really give us this beautiful glow in the space. The last bit of lighting was the chrome picture light. Again, like very modern, very simple. Instead of going with a typical linear under cabinet light, what I've decided to do is pepper the backsplash with marine step lights. What you're seeing here is really cool. It's a little step light that normally would be mounted maybe two feet above the floor, maybe a foot along a pathway or up and down steps to help light your path. These ones specifically are designed to go on a boat. The piece of artwork that I chose is an iconic black and white image 
of Bianca Jagger coming into Studio 54 on a white horse. I wanted something that was kind of like iconic New York that went with the view and went with our steel and our metal and our travel routine and also this like wavy kind of groovy fabric. I like to hang art in my kitchens. This is a painting of the ocean and it sort of feels like a little window looking out to the sea. I like that it's a sort of tongue in cheek nod at our fantasy ship that we've created here. My favorite element of this room is my little herb garden, which is these wall planters that I found that have this kind of like futuristic space age feel to them. They're made of fiberglass and they go directly onto the wall. And in them is basil and rosemary and parsley, bringing nature into the space. I have styled the countertop with an Elmond Belfried tea set. They have a very Bauhaus quality to them. They're super geometric and they feel very simplified, but also a little bit out of this world. I really love my kitchen. It feels personal. And that's what I always try to do in my designs, to think of someone who is not afraid to express themselves in their home. I think a lot of people kind of like steer away from stainless steel kitchens because they maybe feel like it's too industrial. But I think this is a great example of how chic and cool they could look. This is somebody who may not be cooking elaborate meals, but when they have cereal or they get their Chinese takeout, they're doing it with style. Ooh! Wow! Wow! wow. <gasps> that like seating is amazing. Oh, it's you so and I went for that stainless steel mm -hmm. tip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Okay. I've got to know, what was the inspiration for, for the seating? This is a Clarence House fabric. I wanted like this really clean metal kitchen with the travertine. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of just trying to think about what fabric would funk it up a little bit, but stay in this like kind of neutral base. I love a wave, mm -hmm. so it kind of like brought everything to that like disco fun, yeah. like 70s Yeah, it's vibe. such a great balance with like the stark architecture mm -hmm. of the kitchen that you yeah. kept everything so clean and linear and then the fabric just like flies in the face of that, but yeah. in this yeah. way that just like perfectly dials in. My favorite details, my little herb garden there. This mm -hmm. is for a cook, so if you need some fresh basilico, you can just, you know, Love chop it. it off your wall over here. <laughs> <laughs> but this is such a vibe. It's like, a whole vibe. My thought was, if I have to go galley kitchen, I'm going like real galley kitchen. So I started looking at the kitchens on yachts, on airplanes, mm -hmm. in trailers. And so there's a bit of inspiration coming from like vintage Airstreams mm -hmm. and that kind of feel. That's where you're seeing some of these portholes and the stainless steel. And then I was also trying to hearken in a little bit of like a Milano, 60s Milan mm -hmm. vibe. Mm -hmm. And I love the blue tile juxtaposed with that kind of like rose blush colored lacquered cabinetry. You know, I was kind of thinking like this is a typical small, a little cramped and dark New York City kitchen. And so I wanted to really bring in something light and airy. Then I brought in a little bit more of a literal with the Rosie Lee chandelier, oh, which yeah. I'm like Is obsessed with. Is that stained with. glass on the window? Yeah. Oh, you know, I just realized I'm kind of matching my oh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> kitchen. I always say, always match your interior. <laughs>